Hello, my name is Elder Baron Poitier, and back with another flashback. This week, we join Pastor Julian Johnson and my wife, Lady Christian Poitier, in the kitchen and flashback to the Wagner administration. So sit back, relax, because we are starting right now. This is District Elder Julian Johnson, pastor of the Bethesda Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith right here in the city of St. Louis, Missouri. And listen, I am honored to be with you all today along with my colleague. And we're getting ready to make a pineapple upside down cake. Now, I'm not one to brag, but they tell me that my pineapple upside down cake is probably one of the best in town. But I'll let you be the judge of that. I'm excited to be able to welcome you into my kitchen and we're going to go ahead and get started. So, what do we have here? We're going to do this from scratch. I don't believe in box cakes. That's a sin. If you're going to bake, you ought to do it from scratch. So, we got the basic ingredients for any cake. You got your butter, you got your sugar, you got your eggs, your flour, your milk. You need your maraschino cherries. Of course, your pineapples. You also need your brown sugar to go on the base of the pineapple upside down cake. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to start by blending our sugar and our butter together. And we're going to let this cream. And while I'm doing this, you know, one of the things that I really appreciate about the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world is the fact that it is the oldest apostolic organization. And I'm proud to be a fourth generation apostolic in my family. Now, let's go ahead and get this going. Anytime you bake a cake, you always cream your butter and your sugar together. You want to make sure that you're cracking your eggs one at a time. You don't want shells in there. Take that out. We're going to crack that in there, blend it. And then we're going to take the other egg and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to crack it and we are going to blend it. Your egg should always be room temperature. Makes it easier to blend. That's got a nice mixture to it, and that's exactly how we want it. Now, while we're doing that, we're going to mix our flour, and we're going to mix a combination of our baking powder and some salt, and just kind of whisk that together a little bit so that that can all blend. You know, so going back to what I was saying about our organization, I'm grateful that God allowed me to be born into such an August body, you know, coming from an apostolic background. My family has its roots in the Lively Stone Church of God under the late Bishop P.L. Scott. And the Lord led us over to Bethesda Temple under the Honorable Bishop James A. Johnson. And Bishop Johnson was the first one to encourage me. He said, son, you ought to go to the convention and hang with the young people. And so that's what I found myself doing, going to the convention, hanging with the young people, little vanilla extract. Now, I don't measure when I bake, and a lot of people do that. So I went to the convention, I hung out with the young people, and I've been going ever since. And a very significant year for me was 1998, and that's when the Honorable Bishop Norman L. Wagner became the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, and that was also the year my wife and I got married. So that year when I went to the convention, I went for the first time as a happily married man, and I honor uh, Bishop Wagner and his legacy. And I remember the songs that he used to sing, and, and the power of the Lord falling in the services. It was just an awesome time. So we're going to keep mixing this cake because one of the things we love to do as saints, you all know we love to eat. And anytime you have a family that's coming together, be it uh, physically or virtually, you got a half a cup of milk right here, we always enjoy food. Alright, now, while that's going on, we're going to pour this flour in here, and we're going to beat the flour in with the batter, little by little. Flour is very messy. Get it in there like that. Now, one of the 
things you always want to make sure you're doing when you cook is scrape the sides of the bowl, saints. Don't 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 let all that good ingredient just lay on the side. You gotta scrape it. You want to get it in there. You want it to marinate. You got to marinate. Get in there like that. Now that you've got all of your ingredients mixed together, wow, that's beautiful right there. Hello and praise the Lord, everybody. So I'm here to assist Pastor Julian while he's hooking up that cake batter, I'm putting together the pan. So I already have my um, butter coated in the pan. I've added the brown sugar. What we're doing is just spreading it out evenly, the brown sugar over top of the butter. And now we're ready to move on and add these gorgeous pineapples. And then you wanna just start from the center. Just lay your pineapples out. Coat your pan. Now y'all, this is my first time making this while I'm acting like I got this all together. We have the pineapples laid out. Now let's move to these cherries. We're gonna put one in the center of each of the pineapples at the bottom. Look at this, y'all. It's beautiful. And now it's ready for the batter. So whenever Bishop Wagner would get up and sing, it was like an outpour of the Holy Ghost in the entire auditorium. Those were the good old days. Speaking of pouring, how about we get this batter poured? Just like that. This looks so amazing and it's ready for the oven. It was already preheated at 375 degrees. Let's go. While the cakes bake, here's Bishop Norman Wagner at the 2008 convention ministering next time. has been set by God for you. The Lord told Jeremiah, I know the thoughts I think towards you. The thoughts of peace and not of evil. And these thoughts, the thoughts will bring you to an expected end. Get it again. I haven't even created you yet. But the thought that I think about you is going to get you through every test you will ever experience. The thought that I think about you will be stronger, are you ready, than even the sin that you can commit. The thought can get you healed. And I know you just heard that you got two months to live. The reason is God cannot think an idle thought. Whatever God thinks to be, is. Not shall be. Not should have been, could have been, would have been. Whatever God thinks to be, is. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, God made sure that you would get here on this night. We could have been in Beijing. They got two or three new movies coming out on 888. 
But God picked you up and said, I'm going to put you in a place that is designed to get you back to the original thought I had about you. It is not by accident that you are here tonight. The reason why some of you got tied up in the airport is because the devil was trying to detour you from your destiny. The reason why they couldn't find your suitcases for a couple of days and your baggage was lost. The devil was trying to make you ashamed to come to church in which you flew in. And everything he tried did not work. Because of the thought God thought about you. He says now, I know the thought. Somebody say past tense. That I think. Somebody say present tense. So now we see what God is thinking about you now is what he thought about you before he created you. And what God is really saying, I haven't changed my mind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now you have heard about time, even this week. Um, if you are uh, uh, a biblical at all, then you have heard about uh, Kairos time. I will not take you back there. If you are biblical at all, you've heard about Kronos. I will not take you back there. If you are mechanical in any way, then you know about real time. That's actual time. But what I'm trying to tell you tonight, there's another time. It's called next time. Next time. You're going to have to learn how to live in next time. Now, it will confuse you because the Lord said there are only really two times. How is that possible? We live normally in three dimensions of time. We live in the past. We live in the present. And we live in the future. But God said uh, there's actually only two times. Uh, he said there's seed time and harvest. That's it. Uh, seed time and harvest. Uh, that then would mean uh, we know that seed time is the past. Uh, but now it would then mean that harvest has to be the present and the future. Uh, let's see if you can understand it this way. Uh, there is yesterday, then there is today, then there is tomorrow. Uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, yesterday is seed time. Uh, but now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what is really tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow actually is the day after yesterday. Uh, the day after yesterday is tomorrow. Uh, somebody said, well, what are you going to do with today? Today is tomorrow. If, you can, if you're in today, it means you have lived out your yesterday and you got to tomorrow. You just don't know what to do with it. So here, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it brings us to Ezekiel. He comes to Ezekiel and he says to him, I know that you are captive in Babylon. And I know that you don't believe that I am the Lord your God. You're still trying to figure out 
why I didn't answer your prayer and not let you be captive. Uh, you're still trying to figure out um, when you prayed and asked me, uh, Lord, don't let my mother die. And she died. Uh, ah, he says, you're still trying to figure out why I allowed you to go through so many things. Uh, Ah, he said, now Ezekiel, I want to use you, but I got to get you ready. He said, now the people have sinned and I want to use you. And Ezekiel said, he started out. He said, you got the right one. I'm going to preach to them how low down they are, how dirty they are, and how filthy they are. I'm going to tell them what they should do and shouldn't have done. And he said, oh, Ezekiel, you're not ready. So the Bible says he took Ezekiel and sat him where the people sat. He took Ezekiel and said, oh, you need to experience what some of these saints are going through that you're trying to preach at. Uh, you need to sit in their seat and have some of the same problems uh, that they have had. Uh, so he said he picked him up uh, and had him sit uh, in the seat uh, where the people sat. Uh, experiencing the same uh, hardships. Uh, experiencing the heaviness. Uh, and Ezekiel said uh, he sat there for seven days. Uh, let's fast forward the story. Uh, he then brings Ezekiel um, he said, I got another lesson for you. Come follow me. And he led him to the cemetery of the city. And he said, what am I doing here in a graveyard? He took him in a graveyard and uh, they had bones all up, parched. And uh, the meat been eaten off by the vultures. And all of these bones laying in a graveyard. He sees a tombstone dead. Uh, this one uh, was a good man. This one uh, died in an automobile accident. Uh, and uh, he sees all of these bones uh, in this graveyard. Uh, and then God asks him a question. Um, Son of man, can these bones live? Uh, I find it fascinating uh, that he calls them bones. Uh, can these bones live? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, you remember when uh, uh, God created Eve? Uh, you remember when he brought her forth? Uh, how uh, God said, here she is, Adam. Uh, and Adam said, this is bone of my bone. Uh, uh, he says, you got it. Uh, bone of my bone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Lord wants to know, son of man, can these bones live? I, I can't talk about any other graveyard, but this graveyard here, this one, I, these bones right here, can they live? I, the Bible said they were parched and they were very dry. I, he says, son of man, just answer me. I, can these bones live? I, and uh, son of man, Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest. Uh, he said, the only way they can live um, is if you have a preacher. Uh, and if the preacher uh, knows uh, how uh, not to just deal uh, with temporary problems. Uh, God said, uh, son of man, uh, can these bones live? Uh, the one you said has gone too far. The one you said will never have a chance. Son of man, can these bones live? The one that has not yet had the chance to get to the altar and speak in tongues. Son of man, can these bones live? The one who haven't been to the water yet. I just want to ask you, can these bones live? Give me your impossible situation uh, and then let me handle it. Uh, get your hands off of it uh, and let me handle it. Uh, so God told me to tell you today, uh, you got to come up out of that grave. Uh, you've already been buried uh, and you got mad with God, uh, mad with everybody else, uh, mad with yourself, uh, kicking yourself out. Uh, 
you got mad uh, at the people that came to your funeral uh, and there you saw them uh, said he was such a wonderful man uh, and they're the one that put the dagger in your back uh, you're mad at the world around you uh, but God said uh, son of man uh, is there anything too hard for God uh, I can resurrect this thing uh, resurrect what bishop uh, resurrect the original you uh, do you know who you are uh, there's somebody next to you do you know who you are you've got to see here uh, that you're more than you ever dreamed to be uh, you're more than you ever thought to be uh, you are the very image of God uh, and the only reason uh, you are under attack uh, is because uh, of what you carry uh, oh yes uh, the reason uh, you have been fought uh, is not because of your past uh, that's where the devil is tricking the church uh, the devil doesn't fight you uh, because of your past uh, he fights you because of your future uh, he's afraid uh, if you ever get there uh, you're gonna be awesome uh, he's afraid uh, if you ever get over yourself uh, did you hear what i said uh, somebody uh, has got to get over yourself uh, you hear somebody say over my dead body uh, it's time for you uh, to step over uh, your dead body uh, and go for god uh, in the name of the lord jesus uh, god said uh, tell them son of man uh, tell them uh, that i am the lord their god uh, and tell them uh, that i'm coming back again uh, somebody told you uh, that you uh, have not a chance uh, somebody said to you uh, you blew it uh, somebody said to you uh, you messed up for a lifetime uh, that would be true uh, if there wasn't a preacher uh, who knows how to tell you god said uh, you getting up out of here uh, i need you to shake the person next to you and tell them you getting up out of here god is saying to you uh, you're coming up out of the grave uh, god said uh, i will open their grave uh, it's time uh, for you to be revived uh, it's not time uh, for you to play dead uh, god brought you out uh, let them visit your grave uh, but it's empty uh, let them give you a tombstone um, but it's empty uh, because god brought you out uh, he has enough blood uh, to wash away your sins uh, he's got the name uh, that can cleanse you uh, that name uh, that is above every name uh, it's jesus uh, he is the name uh, that name uh, that will get you up out uh, and get you on your way uh, it's time to step away uh, from your past uh, and step away from your fears uh, and step away from i can't do it uh, because i'm saved uh, step away step away i'm talking about you can't do great exploits uh, step away uh, the hand of the lord is on you uh, there's something new uh, that god is doing with you uh, step away uh, and step into uh, your victory today uh, because uh, it's coming back again uh, i want to talk to people uh, who messed up uh, messed up an opportunity uh, blew your money uh, lost your automobile uh, house went into foreclosure uh, marriage crashed on you uh, i want to talk to people who blew it uh, lost uh, your time to go to college uh, lost uh, your ability uh, to function uh, i want to talk to people uh, who wasted their youth uh, and they said uh, lost opportunity is gone uh, but god told me to tell you uh, there's another time coming up uh, you heard about kairos uh, you heard about uh, real time uh, you heard about chronos uh, 
it's next time tell somebody next time oh yeah if God bring this time again next time I'm gonna be awesome I need you to prophesy and tell three people next time I'll be awesome all right this is smelling like it's ready looks done let's get it out oh yeah beautiful brown color Ooh, smells good looks great thank you here you go pastor jay all right there we have it ladies and gentlemen a pineapple upside down cake now whoo that's hot to make sure that your cake comes out right, you always want to go along the edges of the pan to make sure that it doesn't stick. Just like that. And then in order to flip it, you want to make sure that the cake marries the pan. Just like that. Boom! You flip it, you lift it up. And voila! Look at that. Ah, that's pretty right there. Yeah, that's an apostolic Pentecostal power pineapple upside down cake. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed allowing us to show you how to make this and welcoming us into your home. Get together as a family, eat as a family, and let's worship as an August body at our virtual convention. Well, hope you enjoyed this flashback. Tune in again next week as we celebrate the Smith administration. God bless you.